you know, with just the inception of Uncharted, we wanted to create a playable summer blockbuster. We've always rooted it in, it's a character-driven, story-based, action-adventure shooter. Underneath all of that, there's meaningful story moments, there's lovable characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Too long, boy. Oh. The heart is Nathan Drake and the cast of characters that surround him. This was somebody who was vulnerable. I remember the first time that we did a punching thing, and I said, hey, what if, it, what if he, I hit him and it hurt? You know, I said, I've punched people, it hurts. So it was one of the first people who hit and go, ah, you know, and, and when he fell from a height, it, it knocked the wind out of him and he would struggle to get up. That's what Nate is at his core. He's just a normal guy trying to do the best he can and he just keeps falling into these extraordinary circumstances and, you know, has to dig his way out of them. And everybody wants to be that guy. You want to be that adventurer that's digging up treasures that have been lost to history and time. You want to see what kind of problems he gets himself into and how they're going to get out of it. And you get to be part of that adventure, like, how am I going to get them out of that? With Uncharted 1, you know, that was our, our first game on the PlayStation 3. We moved away from Jack and Daxter. It was a brand new IP, and it felt like we really have something to prove here. It was like, create a character that moves believably, that has a realistic weight, but also is fluid and responsive, and that is, just about the most difficult thing you can ask. Drake was kind of like, he was kind of a little newer to the game. Uh, he was still figuring himself out and so was the studio in lots of ways. We were still trying to figure out what Uncharted was. The cutting edge part of Uncharted was the process by which they decided to capture the content. And a lot of it was trial and error and trying to figure it out and trying to gain experience of doing that. All the games that I'd done before were all you go into a booth by yourself and you do the lines, one by one. And I thought that's what it was going to be. And Gordon Hunt, who was the director, came over and I'd known him for a while and he said, this is what we're gonna do, you're gonna start out here and you're gonna go and I said, whoa, whoa, Gordon, what, what are you talking about moving around here? This is a game, right? And he said, yeah, it's motion capture. And I went, motion what? And I think, you know, especially 10 years ago when this started, that was something that people never saw. And we had these kind of, this idea of the game was going to be three pillars. It was going to be combat, traversal, and puzzles. And now it felt like with Uncharted 2, we really, now we really have something to prove. Let's tell a more complex story. Let's get deeper into who this character is. Let's show some of his flaws. Let's get into some of his vulnerabilities, his insecurities as a character. But at the same time, we wanted to up our set piece game. And from a couple of pieces of core technology, mostly, Drake's interaction with moving objects. That sort of spawned these, these big set pieces, like the, the train uh, and the building that collapsed. Uh, but they weren't the focus, they weren't the, the core tenant. We didn't start saying, we're gonna make amazing set pieces. We started saying, we're gonna make core gameplay that's really, really solid to play. By the time we got to three, it was like, okay, how do we take all of that and go bigger? Last of Us to me was refreshing because you could get away from that spectacle. You could think more on like a very intimate character level and gain an experience with something that again, as a team we were uncomfortable with. We've never done something like that before. We've never tackled a genre like that before. We tried to take those big over the top set pieces and we tried to couple them in with pivotal points in the story so that when a big event happens to our characters or the relationships with those characters that we really wanted to play those out. The ideal for us is that when you're playing the game and the character's going through an emotion on the screen, that we've made you feel that emotion. One thing that we really learned uh, from The Last of Us and kind of experimented with and got really good results from is just allowing the player to just poke around in an intriguing environment. You know, talk to people, have these kind of side conversations with your buddies or with your allies and stuff that give the player this slow time to really make themselves a part of this world. Hey, you like that? Huh? Nate, it's a tower. If it's solid, come on, it's a, it's a lemur. Come on, come say hi. Something that we really felt like we learned a lot on The Last of Us is the relationship between Joel and Ellie and how 
it's not just Joel doing everything, but Ellie is a big part of it as well. And, and it feels so satisfying when she helps him out at the last minute, right when you need it. It really resonated with us and we really want to incorporate that type of feeling as well with the characters that you travel the story with. We want them to be there with you and, and helping you and you guys working together as a team. After making The Last of Us, I think that that influenced a lot in making a more personal story with Uncharted. But at the same time, you know, we, we love Uncharted. Uh, this is still the Uncharted that you've always loved. It's just there's more layers to it now. So moving back into the Uncharted world is kind of like coming home in a way and creating a very kind of brighter, larger world to play in. It's similar in some ways to, you know, Nathan Drake being drawn back to the adventure, being for us to like go big again and go like big spectacle, big explosions. While trying to like take on all the lessons we've learned throughout the games that we've worked on and try to tell a more human story within that. Uncharted 4, perhaps as a result, is going to be the best balance of bombastic and over the top and exciting adventure and these smaller moments, these small intimate moments that end up meaning just as much, that end up having sticking with us for just as long. I think there's a lot of responsibility for us to be true to what has come before with Uncharted. The last three games were these amazing adventures, and now that we're doing the fourth one, which may be the final chapter, there's a lot of respect that the characters have earned. There's a lot of uh, emotion that we've invested in these guys and gals over the years, and a lot of hard work that's gone into to make it all possible. We feel like there's so much invested from all the people here that have been working on Drake and the, this whole like world for a decade. We want to do ourselves the service of actually tying this together. And I think there is some responsibility there to take it seriously, to tell the story of these characters honestly, because there are so many people that, that takes such joy in us that our responsibility is to then make sure that they're getting the best possible game we can make. And that's constantly as a team, you're seeing how every department pushes the other one and we strive for nothing less than perfection. Even though we'll never achieve it, we're constantly shooting for that. And that's the thing that drives us, is we want to make something that we can look at and be proud of and say like, man, this is, like how cool we made this. Every pixel on the screen, like somebody here, there was energy that went into every single pixel on that screen. That's awesome. If you'd said to me 15 or 20 years ago, you're gonna get your most success in your entire career from a video game. Yeah, right. Nate, come on. And I had no idea, none of us had any idea what we were beginning. When we started making Uncharted 1, there was a lot of younger people at the studio. Most of us, when we started in this industry, we started in our early 20s. And when we started, every, every hero, every character was in their early 20s. And you, as we get older, as developers, we make experiences that relate to us and characters that relate to us. Games and, and in the art tends to reflect the mentalities and the things that the people who make the art think about. Uh, and in this case, we've definitely had a long time to grow up while we're making Uncharted, and it seemed only fitting for Drake to continue to grow in that sense. It adds another element to the, to the story that we can play with. Our characters haven't been fixed or frozen in time. I mean, he looks like a kid in one because of the smoothness of the textures, because of the smoothness of the modeling. And back then, that was really good, right? And as we got better, and as the platforms got better, you can see him not only get more complex and more sophisticated, but he also is aging. We're showing more of the things that we could not show before. The subtlety of wrinkles, the subtlety of skin pores. But there's a lot of things that we need to keep in mind. For example, we cannot really just age them as normal people do. He's a hero character. You're going to see the physical effects of what's happening to Drake. He is an everyman. He doesn't just escape with a laugh. Like, these things are taking its toll. But I think that that humanizes a fictional character even more. You, you see him maturing not only in age, but in wisdom. Now, Sully has had this thing right from the beginning, right from the first game. And this was something that I added at some point. Says, I'm too old for this shit. No, 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 no. If you're gearing up for one of your I'm too old for this speeches, spare me. 
I think now that Nathan is beginning to have that thought himself. Come on. We got a treasure to find. Hold up, man. I mean, what are we doing? And this is the one where, like, it gets to the root of who is he? What's important to him? And that is really why we wanted to tell this story, is we wanted to get to the heart of what drives Nathan Drake. We played with some of the themes of growing up responsibility in the previous Uncharted's, but I think when it came down to it, it was all about what did Nathan Drake want uh, in his life. He was willing to risk everything for, for treasure. But as you get older, you want your life to be worth something more. You want to have an impact. It's kind of an interesting perspective to see our hero grow up a bit and having to deal with themes like family and future and not just be caught up in the moment of, of finding just a treasure. He's actually thinking long term and what this might mean for his future. One of the things I've loved about this from the beginning is the evolution of this family unit that has developed. From an acting standpoint, it's always fun to get to play someone that you enjoy for this long. Because in this industry, you play a part and they fade very quickly and you have to move on to the next one. So I have quite a fondness and an attachment to Miss Elena Fisher. She starts off super passionate, very gung-ho, I'm all for adventure. And then you see as she gets closer to Nate and as she gets closer to Sullivan, as she gets closer to these dangerous events, we see her not step back, but just become more aware and more cautious, I think, of what an adventure means and what it might cost. And I think as we grow older, we actually kind of get a chance to look back at our lives and see what's important to us and uh, how the decisions that we've made have kind of impacted where we're at and maybe where we're going. That's a very similar journey to Nathan Drake, right? If you look at him in Uncharted 1, he is a guy that makes huge sacrifices as far as his personal life to achieve greatness. And I think, uh, in a way, we're seeing that happen with both Naughty Dog and the Uncharted franchise in general. And as a game developer, you know, it's this is hard work. Like, people think it's like you're here playing games all the time, and sure, that happens every once in a while, but for the most time, this is very hard, grueling work. A lot of times it's long hours, and you make personal sacrifices. We're taking that experience and putting it into the art that we're making, so that when you play Uncharted 4, you're going, oh, okay, you know, this has more character depth to it, this has more visual depth to it. We're trying to bring everything as creative people that we're experiencing and funnel that into the medium in which we're working. Wisdom comes from experience and, and time. And Nathan Drake certainly has had enough experiences that uh, lends itself to a lot of wisdom if he's paying attention. It's been one of the most rewarding characters I've ever been handed because uh, I, from the get-go I was, uh, encouraged to you know, put as much of myself into this character as possible and uh, it has just been the greatest ride of my life these last 10 years. You're with this character for years and you're in this world for years and you do like you go home on the weekends and you're eating dinner with your family and you're thinking about those characters in that world and it's such a part of you that to walk away is very hard as I'm sure it will be at the end of this game. For me as a, as a designer for, for Naughty Dog as a studio I think that feeling kind of permeates through every everything we're doing as a developer, and maybe to a fault that's like, this is the last one you're gonna do. This is the last one you're gonna get to make. So anything that you wanted to have, it has to go in, it has to be there. And as a group, you know, like we just got closer and tighter together with each game that we've made. And so over time, we've just gotten like, we've just learned from our mistakes over and over again. And so I think that that kind of sophistication uh, is, is a big part of growing more mature, and I think players are going to see that in Uncharted 4. So all we can really do as a team is make something that's really personal to us, um, use everything that we've learned in the past to kind of elevate the medium one step further, to challenge ourselves to go into areas that we're uncomfortable with, and we do that with every game, and hopefully we come out on the other side with something great. Early on, these emails would go out, like in the character team, and they'd send these videos, and they'd show like what they can now do with the eyes, or what they can like now get sweat happening on the skin. When I'm just like, this is ridiculous, and kind of super rad. Hey, brother! Watch out! To 
see what Uncharted on a next-gen console is going to look like? That was a question we just had to find out for ourselves. I think the biggest design thing that came out of the new hardware was literally just the bigger spaces. We have bigger levels than we've ever had before. Maybe 10 times the size, at least, of explorable space. The challenge for us is, and the thing that's been super hard, is like, how do we give you more choices and make the pacing feel just as intense as when things have been more linear for us? It does introduce challenges as far as telling a very specific story. Well, you still have point A to point B. You just have different branches now to get there. So you've got three or four different ways to get there, but you still have to get there. Now, the complexity comes in every one of those ways has to be thought out and well designed. And we were able to kind of stick by kind of a core tenant uh, of, I think, of what Naughty Dog's art is all about, which is this handcrafted, this very hand-placed, this very, very directed, every step along the way, kind of composition of art. We let you have a lot of choices, but it's like, it's moving forward at a, at a very fast pace. Right, right, right. We've been able to make the world so much bigger than we've ever been able to make before. And then also, at the same time, improve the detail of any one area. So we've increased the, the density of detail and the size of the world all at the same time. So with larger worlds comes larger possibilities. And larger possibilities usually mean more detail. In fact, that's one of the things that we're really shooting for in this game is a higher level of detail on the PlayStation 4 and the experience for our gamers. So the resolution uh, involved in that requires a lot more work and a lot more thought and a lot more time. It's not just, eh, any old dirt will do. It's a very specific dirt. And how wet is that dirt? How many pebbles are pushing up in that dirt? And you take that consideration and you apply it to everything, everything. One of the things that I think improved the most from Uncharted 3 to Uncharted 4 is texture resolution. Bigger texture means more detail. The new hardware just allows us to achieve what we've been trying to achieve the whole time, and that's just believability and complexity. There's a lot of just passion into all these small, small, small details that really shines through, and it's because we really empower people who care to make the difference that they want to make. Nathan Drake in-game has at least 11 to 12 outfit, and that's just for Nathan Drake. Think about, we have Elena, we have Nadine, we have Rafe, we have Sully, we have Drake's brother. Everything suddenly needs a level of thought and scrutiny that we didn't have to do before. It makes a much more rich experience, a much more immersive experience, but it takes a lot of time. Just the quantity of, of interactable things in the environment. I mean, we really want our jungles and our environments to feel alive and being able to have hundreds and hundreds of objects that can be destructible and it's moving around. It, it impacts gameplay in that, you know, your cover can be destroyed, so you have to move around more. But even outside of that, just seeing all this stuff happening, it, it, the, the screen is so much more alive. The world is much more alive. Everyone here respects the craft of making a video game and that why shouldn't every part of this game be the best thing, the, the best art, the best, you know, have design really be like serious, considered design and crafted experience for the player. And uh, once that kind of gets into the DNA, it, it kind of takes over everything. And, uh, you know, everybody from the very top to the very bottom, we do have a structure. We're, we're flatter than a lot of places, but we do have a structure. But everybody listens to everybody. And if somebody has a fantastic idea, they're encouraged to just shout it out and people will listen. That feedback, it's welcome and it's encouraged and we want that because that kind of format is ultimately going to challenge all of us and challenge everybody to say like, can we do better? What's most important is when you stand back and you look at the whole um, and when you're running through the level um, and you're experiencing uh, and, and playing through the gameplay, the environments, the characters, the art, it's all there to just support the, uh, the experience. It's, it shouldn't stand out as the experience. Hop on! Go ahead! Here, take this! It's really an interesting challenge. Like, if we do our job right, hopefully people are not going, wow, that's great animation. They're just engrossed, and they're believing it. <laughs> I think we lost them. Hey, Nate, we can never, ever come back to this city. Add it to the list. 
The biggest change we've had in Uncharted 4 would be the use of the head cams and the facial markings, facial animation. For the first three games, this has always been hand animated. Now we're in a unique situation that we're now capturing those actors' faces and we're getting all the great details that that brings in and then we inject the look and feel that we've come to expect from uh, the characters that we know. Every animator that we hire at Naughty Dog has to be um, really good with working with motion capture because a lot of their job will be doing that. But they also have to be a really, really good animator because when we do need to animate something that we can't capture, it has to look exactly like something that we captured. Yeah, can I help you? Yeah, I'm uh, looking for my little brother. Sam? It's good to see you again, Nathan. God, Sam. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> Last gen, you'd actually get a black frame between gameplay and cutscene, which would mean it kind of takes you out of the experience. It's a little tell. Okay, now it's just, I'm watching something. So that's been a huge thing that the PlayStation 4 has allowed us to do, that all of our cutscenes are now in-game. What it boils down to is blurring the line between when, when do we kind of make this a pure cinematic moment that, that you just sit back and, and enjoy versus actually saying no. We need you. We need you right now. Do your thing. People don't only want to watch passively a story, they want to be able to participate in it. I think the focus, as always, is what serves what serves the story. And traditionally, and, and this isn't any different, uh, we try to keep as much of the big action in the hands of the player. So it's not something that you finish something in the game and then get to watch. It's something you get to experience. You, you reach that point yourself. What we're trying to do is make them richer, uh, make them more playable, give the player more options within uh, those set pieces. So to have like a really interesting combat encounter with a lot of different options and a lot going on within a set piece that's falling apart all around you. The, the gameplay, the environment, the music, everything is coming together to make you as the player feel like you're Nathan Drake and to feel like you're on this grand adventure. Anytime that you switch platforms, it's going to be a huge struggle, but I think, especially for us, this time was very difficult. What we had on the previous Uncharted games and on The Last of Us was written for the cell architecture, and it was all optimized for that. But the PlayStation 4 just does things differently. The whole studio, like, tools, everything. It's, it's a massive challenge to push content that now needs to fill, like, 8 gigs versus the 256 or 512 megs that were on the PS3. You have all this memory, you have all this uh, new processing power, so I knew that there would be a step up. I think I was surprised, and I think a lot of people in the studio were surprised by just how big that leap was going to be. First kind of starting, we asked the question of, PlayStation 4, what can we do? And for me, there are always new things that there were still left to put in the game, like how do you put a vehicle in Uncharted and still make it Uncharted? Oh, this was really a great idea, Nate. Do you want to try? Oh, you're doing just fine. It's been a challenge because we really want it to feel like the interaction is causing things to happen. So whenever it's driving over a dusty terrain, there's a lot of dust kick up and then Say you go into a muddy section, the effects are going to communicate that too. If the tires spin out, then they're going to kick up a lot of mud and the vehicle's going to get muddy. And we just want to have that connection between uh, this vehicle that you're controlling and the environment that you're in. Can we do the convoy sequence from Uncharted 2 and 3, but now I'm in control of that vehicle at the same time? And driving through a dense urban city, driving quickly, is quite a challenge because you're looking at all that geometry and all that complexity just flying by you, but you, you can't halfway do it because you'll know. Um, so we have to spend so much time thinking about the people that are populating the scene, the signs in the scene, the vegetation in the scene, and even though that stuff's flying by, it's got to be convincing. We're trying to make the gameplay experience more rich by basically giving the player more choices. So we've added our rope mechanics, so that's not just a gimmick, like that's fully integrated into uh, 
uh, just about all of our, our gameplay encounters. Uh, obviously the rope has a huge effect on combat, so we've got melee moves that come out of rope, uh, using the rope to traverse the space to get an advantage, uh, either in open combat or in stealth. One thing I really appreciated that like Bruce kind of brought around from the beginning was Let's explore the meat and potatoes of this game again. Let's get back to just like what is the core gameplay of this. We know we're gonna get the set pieces. We know we're gonna have these big things and we're gonna push that as well. But get back into our gut of like what is Uncharted? What is the traversal gunplay? What we wanted to do with the combat is really push the, the things that are unique to Drake, the things that are unique to him as a character. Um, and one of the main things that Drake can do is just he has this amazing ability to traverse through the environment. The climbing system in Uncharted 4 has been completely overhauled. We've come up with a, a system that gives just an unprecedented amount of fine control over Drake as he climbs. You um, have full analog control over both of his hands to put his hand exactly on the rock, on the handhold where you want it to be and fluidly go from, from one climb to another. We're also able to integrate Drake into the environment a lot more. When he's climbing on the outside of a vehicle, he's moving with that vehicle, um, with his weight on that vehicle on top of the animation. So it's something that the PlayStation 4 gives us that we have so much more memory. That tends to be our biggest constraint in animation is just trying to fit all this motion all this animation in memory. In the past, for example, when you had uh, a character traversing with you, that character's traversal was scripted. Like, once you moved here, they would move in these very specific ways. Now, actually, it's very systemic, and both the, the enemies and your allies can view the terrain in kind of this 3D space. When you have big spaces, and you have the mobility of Nathan Drake, you got to have mobility within your AI. There's a lot of really nuanced decision making in terms of how, for example, how exposed an AI is as they're taking a flank route. They now have this like really complex knowledge of the exposure to the player's vision as they're taking a flank route. And they will kind of dynamically decide, okay, this is actually a better route because there's more cover along this route. We didn't want a game where you just sit behind one piece of cover and just you know, sitting there and, and the stop and pop, you're sitting there and shooting. We really wanted you to to move through the environment, to outsmart them, to flank them, for them to be able to chase you around uh, and just have that constant motion. The enemies are smarter. We've taken a lot of the, the stealth uh, elements from The Last of Us and brought those in so the player has more choices in combat. Uh, you can actually avoid an enemy, lose their line of sight, and just sneak past them and not even have to encounter them. Like it used to be that you're either in stealth or you're in combat. And now there's these kind of varying levels of stealth. Uh, they go into investigate when they think they've seen you, but they're not 100% sure. Uh, then they'll go into combat once they find you. And once they lose you after combat, they'll go into search where they'll kind of canvas the area looking for you. A lot of that scripting is still up to the designers, but we've given them so much better tools in order to, to achieve that. We always had contextual moves where you could slam guys into a wall and beat them up. Enemies are able to do that to you as well. You'll have uh, moves and kind of fight situations where two enemies are attacking you at once, and it's not in like a scripted way. It can happen kind of in any combat encounter. There's a lot of new tools in the, in the player's disposal, but what's cool is that they're kind of added in this way that's elegant enough to not you know, explode the game with HUD and all these like crazy options that are difficult to learn. It's very much that same kind of seamless, very smooth, uncharted experience where we get a lot of gameplay from relatively few mechanics. And having really gorgeous animations that feels very rooted and grounded, but at the same time gives you the responsiveness. You're gonna get to play this. We're showing off in a way of just like, look how gorgeous this can be. Look at what we can do. Look at the colors, look at the scenes, look at the environments that you're gonna get to explore, and you're gonna get to have that on the stick. The biggest fear that keeps me up at night is, are we really gonna do this? It's a huge game with all these new systems. It's not one thing that makes it hard, it's everything. I guess it's kind of cliche, but I guess that's kind of the 
the fun and the challenge of it too. We don't make it sequentially. We're jumping around from part to part. So we don't really know 100% what it's gonna be like until the very end. And sometimes it can be a bit scary. You know, you look at that, that end date that's just getting closer and closer. All of our fans love Drake. We don't wanna, you know, make our last Drake game and have it not be the best Uncharted game we can make. It's selfish in a way, like we want to do the, the fan service and completing everything that everyone else wants to see. The thing is, we are probably some of the biggest fans ourselves. The fans' reaction, sometimes even when it's negative, is one of the best perks of the job in that you are able to reach other people and you get to see how much they care. And we get letters sometimes from people that they say like, you know, this has changed my life. Like something in, something shifted in playing that. It's like, I learned something. It's like, wow, we did that. We created something that touched people. That inspired them in the way that movies and games and comics have inspired me and the people I work with. And to know that, you know, someday someone is gonna be way better at this and somehow I got them on that path is just overwhelming with like gratitude of, of that I get to do this, that this is my job. And so whenever we see like a, a really cool letter from someone that they email in, or we got a, a huge scrapbook once of all this different art that someone had put together, that really touches us and, and it we appreciate it on a, on a super deep level. Some of the most fulfilling things you can find in real life are those connections you have with people and those moments of understanding or play. And that's a much rarer thing in a video game. It's far rarer to find your character having a moment with another character that means a lot to you. And I think that just now and again, we just come a little close to reproducing some of that fulfillment and enjoyment that you get from real life characters, from real people. I really hope that people can see the effort that we put in to make the character more alive. When I see those cutscenes coming in, I see that facial animation. Just the subtext you can get in these scenes. I've never seen it in Uncharted, I've never seen it in a game. The level of uh, authenticity that our characters are starting to take on honestly has such emotion to it that I'm really proud of us as a studio for putting that out there. And everyone here at Naughty Dog is a storyteller. We have something important to say to the story and help immerse them in the world of you know, Nathan Drake and Elena Fisher. As you play through the series, you do sort of begin to develop a, 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 an affinity for the characters and an understanding of what motivates them. And I hope that this game kind of brings that all to a nice crescendo. I hope people cry when they play it, and I hope that they laugh when they play it. We've always made sure that that's part of our vision, and that's it. It's like we want people to say, once they put it down, be like, I just had a ton of fun. Heads up! Like every game, every year has been, a, you know, a new thing to learn, a new thing to accomplish, and we're never done. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be. <laughs> I hope the whole industry keeps moving forward because it has been. There's no slowing down, and this is just another step on that road. There's a lot of memories there, and uh, to leave it behind, it's it's funny. I'm working on this layout right now with one of the last traversal sequences in the game, and there's this one jump. And every single player that we've watched play test, it stops at the gap and kind of looks and is like questions like, can I make that? It's a pretty big, pretty big jump. And they go for it. And you see Nathan Drake flailing his arms wildly. And Nathan Drake reaches out and he grabs that last handhold. And that's our last epic jump in the Uncharted series. And that to me is like, I'm getting a little choked up. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of memories there. You know, when you work on a franchise for this long, you become a unit, you become a family. And you could tell that everybody just wanted to make something that was really, really good. So you two made it out okay. Way better than okay. We found the battalion. <laughs>
I've had a lot of time to reflect on everything that's happened, and I have to be careful not to get too emotional because this has been the greatest opportunity uh, that I've ever had. The journey I have personally had with Elena and with this story has been one of extreme thankfulness and gratitude and growth just as a person and as an actor. I had to protect you. That is bullshit, Nate. You just didn't have the nerve to face me. And this particular game right from the beginning was like being a little kid playing again with your friends. Let's check it out, huh? Yeah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Something about this feels kind of hinky. Hinky. And it was just such fun to go to work every day. It's been a great ride. I, I, I really enjoyed it, like I say. I'm <sighs> gonna miss this guy. Ah, oh, just bring me back something shiny, will you? I think the quality of the story really is just this kind of very emotionally satisfying, beautiful denouement to, to the Nathan Drake story. And everything is like you're playing through it. It's not something you're just watching passively. We're using our medium to the fullest. And you're hauling down this alleyway at 40, 60 miles an hour. But you're like, that was awesome. Look at that. That was cool. And that's Naughty Dog. Making video games is our adventure. It's our Uncharted. It's been a perfect blend from the actors and directors on the on the mocap stage to what happens back at the Naughty Dog building when the, the designers and programmers and artists and everybody puts that stuff together. I hope that that can sit on somebody's shelf and they can revisit it years later and go, oh, this was a great series. This was so much fun. I hope more than anything people are entertained. That from the opening shot to that final closing image that you don't want to put the controller down.